Oh, whoa, what's that all about? Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Joe, and welcome to a tutorial on how I make my SFM posters. Now, this is going to possibly be in two parts, depending on how long it takes. But I've been asked quite a few times the, the sort of process I go through to make my SFM posters and it's really not too difficult and I feel like they're very basic, they get straight to the point and it could help a lot of you guys out as well if you are looking to sort of get into SFM. So the first thing you want to do is launch SFM. Uh, I don't know what SDK is. Uh, but when you click launch SFM, just launch Source Filmmaker, right? I don't know what SDK is, but it doesn't matter because you don't use it. And you're greeted with this screen. This is going to be a very sort of beginner tutorial. I'll go through everything step by step. So you lads who are just starting SFM won't get left behind. Uh, so black screen, no map loaded. You know what that means? You've got to load a map. Right click, load map. And what this will open up is a list of every map in the game. So I generally go for a King of the Hill map. And generally I'll go for Koth King because I like the lighting on that map. So you're going to click open and this will take a while to load. So I'll get back to you lads when the map has loaded. Alright, so you should be in a spawn on the map. And what you're going to want to do is, it will say no camera, right? Switch to work camera just for now. And you're going to want to hold the left click. And that, that allows you to move the camera. And then, whilst holding the left click, you use your WASD keys. You can just fly about the map, mate. You can fly anywhere you want. And you, you just find a decent place to, to make your SFM poster. I'd also recommend scrolling the mouse wheel down. And that in, improves the FOV. Because it's decent to have a poster, in my opinion, with like a, a, a pretty high field of view. Um, posters with a, like a, no, a pretty low... Wait, no, a pretty high field of view. Yeah, I was getting a bit confused then with all the numbers running through my head. But, uh, yeah, a pretty high field of view, so it's pretty zoomed in. Um, no, a pretty low field of view, so it's pretty zoomed in, just purely because a high field of view, like, a, with a low field of view, you can actually see, like, your character better. So, just find somewhere on the map. I mean, like, this is a pretty cool spot. Like, anywhere where there's not a huge amount of lighting that can obstruct the poster, because we're, we're actually going to be doing that ourselves, lads. We're actually going to be doing our own lighting. So Rocket Noodle here seems like an appropriate place for our poster. And what you're going to want to do before you do anything, ignore the secondary viewport for this second. Click the drop-down menu. Do not click anything else. The drop-down menu, change scene camera and new camera. And that will place the camera that's actually going to be rendered into your final poster there. So you can, now on the right-hand side where it says camera 1, click it. And this is a work camera, so now you can move this any way you want to help you and like to to get you help you sort of position things better um, without obstructing the main camera. So let's just say we want to make a poster of a spy. Let's just say a spy or a pyro. Let's do let's do pyro Joe's load up because I mean that seems fairly relevant. So it will load all of the wait. Oh yeah, I forgot how to do that. So you press the plus arrow, create animation set for new model. And this is literally, as it says, create a new model. So we're going to search Pyro, and a bunch of items will come up. You're going to want to find Pyro.mdl and open. And what this will do, now your camera one, is the Pyro's crotch. Um, not too important at the moment, but as you can see, click the green, like, make sure you're not on this, because if it's on this one, well, I don't know any of these technical terms, the clip editor, make sure it's not on the clip editor, make sure you go to the middle one, the motion editor, and click it. Then, go over to the second camera, move it about so you can see what's going on uh, using the WASD keys, once again, as I mentioned previously, and click the, the four arrows pointing up, down, left, and right. And what this will do is let you freely position the pyro, um, or whatever class you're doing, um, as you please. And generally, for my posters, I've spoken to other people who do this as well, I mean, their feet will be through the floor, and that's not too important. Um, I mean, half his body is submerged in the concrete right now, which could be a bit of an issue uh, in real life. But, I mean, yeah, in this poster, it doesn't really matter. And that's due to the fact that, I mean, you're not going to see the bottom half in the final render. This is what the final poster is going to look like. This is just what what you can see to sort of position it. So, once your pyro is in an appropriate thing, and the best thing about the pyro is you don't need to worry about doing facial expressions and stuff like that. It's like a blessing, because pyro wears a mask. But anyway... Um, if you want to add some items, you, the best way to do this, uh, this only works for items that haven't recently been added to the game. You right click the model and add Team Fortress item, and then just search for the item you want to add. So I'm going to do the Sub-Zero suit. I want to do the last breath, but as you can see, if I go to do the last breath with the Pyromancer's mask, uh, with the Pyro default mask, they clip together, and there's a really simple resolution for this. Uh, make sure you're highlighted on the Pyro, right click him or her, depending on what the what gender the Pyro is, set body groups, go under head, 
and click none and what this will do is get rid of the default head on the pyro leaving us with just the last breath you can do this before or after you add the last breath really doesn't matter what order and finally for the pyro joe loader we're going with the burning flames pyro's beanie and i'll go i'll show you how to do unusual effects in just a second but there we go um there is Pyro Joe in a fairly decent position. Obviously, I add text in Photoshop um, on the left-hand side. So that's not really too important for SFM. But he's on the left-hand side of the poster. And you might be thinking he's just in a stock pose. He's not really doing anything. Right-click the Pyro. Import Sequence. And this is just going to save you from doing a custom pose. Um, you can essentially just make your Pyro do any pose that's actually in the game. So uh, I generally go for a selection menu one or potentially a taunt or like a standing item one and what this will do is literally just position the pyro in a sort of way where it's just sort of idle and it, again it works for any class so you can make them do a taunt it's really up to you but for the sake of this video i'm going to go with stand item one and then as you can see slid down a bit no worries because we're still there and we've still got the four arrows click the blue arrow drag him up and as you can see he, he's meant to be holding a weapon uh, by the looks of it a shotgun uh, so to add weapons, it's just the same as cosmetics. Add Team Fortress item and shotgun pyro. And they, there we go. So that our pyro is holding a shotgun in the poster. And um, finally, like for the for the main sort of poster, let's do an unusual effect. So you click the add drop down again in the left hand side. Create animation set for new particle system. Browse. And it should by default be on this, and if it isn't, just find this, Steam Apps Common, Source Filmmaker, Game TF Particles. Once you get here, open item underscore fx dot pcf. What this is, is a massive list of every single particle effect that's in Team Fortress 2. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to be doing Super Rare Burning 1, and that's Burning Flames. Super Rare Burning 2 is uh, Scorching Flames, and I mean, there's a bunch of other ones as well. You can actually Google, um, I think it's literally just unusual effects sfm and you get a full list of what each unusual effect is actually called in sfm so burning one for the sake of this video uh this is quite important as well so on the start time you put zero emission duration 99 particle system lifetime 99 and this just means that no matter how long along the uh, how far along the timeline you move the effect won't expire so to actually put the super rare burning on the pyro as you can see it's just in the air right now it's not really doing anything it's really simple so we go over to the pyro uh click the drop down menu for body and then click the drop down well click the drop down menu for the burning effect then click the drop down menu for all and literally just drag bip underscore head all the way down to transform and let go and what that will do is lock it and one thing you need to do is click super rare burning go to procedural and just drag the zero slider all the way up now when you slide this across as you can see that's your boy pyro joe fresh uh, in the flesh in sfm that's my loadout and you may be thinking to yourself joe uh don't get me wrong you know it's it's a cool looking poster but it's not blurred behind him and that is a very good observation first thing you're going to want to do before rendering is right click the capture the, the main camera render settings untick motion blur make sure you always do that uh, just to eradicate any sort of artificial blur then drop down menu once again animation set for existing elements click camera one press ok uh, then click cameras and you're going to want to drag this focal distance just past the pyro so just so the pink has just gone past him i mean it's all down to preference but i do it so the pink is just behind the character and then just drag the aperture up to a suitable amount and the further the aperture up is um the more blurred the background will be so we could drag it all the way up there and as you can see the background's extremely blurred we can drag it there and it's not too blurred whatsoever i generally tend to have it around two thirds of the way between a half and two thirds so i mean that's what our, our poster will look like and i mean if you want to do lighting i guess i could make a separate tutorial on that but this is just a really super basic poster um where again i'd add text on the side and you may be thinking to yourself joe i've got my poster but it's just an SFM, how do I get an image of it? And once again, that's a very good question indeed. You're literally just going to want to head over to the toolbar at the top, click File, Export, Poster, Save Changes, and just decide what you're going to title it. Uh, decide what format I'd recommend PNG. 
and decide what image size 1920 by 1080 is generally a good shout and you just press export poster and that will render it as an image which you can then find in your elements folder and then go to renders and the poster will be there in the png form so uh, that is just about it for this video guys if you did enjoy please do remember to leave a like and let me know what you thought down below uh, if you would like to see more sfm videos and once again do let me know down in the comments below thank you guys so much for watching and peace